Hello friends, my name is JJ. So I know that the reason why you guys keep coming back to this channel is because that you know that I am not afraid to use my platform to tackle the big questions, like in my award-winning video on which religion is the correct one, or my equally award-winning video on why you should just dump Nicole already. But today we are going to tackle the thorniest of all of life's great mysteries. Why is it so common to find a single shoe lying on the side of the road? Now, there is no way that you haven't noticed this before. Single shoes lying on the side of the road is a phenomenon that seems to be present in some form or another in all nations of the earth, in rural areas, as well as city centers, on unpaved dirt roads, as much as major urban highways. My British YouTuber pal Half Asleep Chris did a video a while ago where he wandered around his neighborhood for a week or so picking up litter and found no less than six shoes on the side of the road, none of which had a mate. The weirdest thing I found was probably all the single shoes. I mean, who keeps leaving their shoes everywhere and not noticing? Now, obviously, on some level, there is nothing exceptional about finding garbage on the street. But, as Chris said, it is the fact that you tend to only find one shoe at a time that makes this so bizarre. Humans almost always interact with shoes in pairs, even when they're throwing them out. So there is something inherently mysterious or even slightly unsettling about coming across a single discarded shoe in isolation. As the kids say, it is a bit of a cursed image a picture that tickles our brain in a weird way because it contradicts so many assumptions about how this particular object is supposed to work. So how do all of these shoes get separated from their mates? And why do they wind up along the side of roads of all places? Weird as it might sound, I have been wanting to do a video on this topic for a long time because one of my favorite authors also happens to be perhaps the world's leading scholar of this phenomenon. You see, during the 1990s, there was a series of books called Imponderables by a guy called David Feldman that I was very loyal to. The gimmick was that people would write to David asking him to solve some mundane mystery of daily life, and he would devote considerable time and resources to finding the answer. For example, why do hardcover books have little bits of checkered cloth at the top of their spines? Or why do toilet seats in public bathrooms have that gap in the front? He wrote 11 of these books from 1987 to 2006, and I bought all of them. It is one of my proudest collections. But anyway, there were several mysteries of modern life that even old David couldn't find a satisfying answer to. He called these mysteries the Frustrables, and he would continue to plug away at them over the course of the entire book series, updating readers on the latest breakthroughs and theories he had stumbled upon as the years progressed. And there was no Frustrable more unsolvable, more maddeningly mysterious, than the question of why you sometimes find one shoe lying on the side of the road. He explored this question in almost all of his books, representing over 20 years of research. And given that this great man has sadly fallen into a bit of obscurity these days. Today I thought I would honor his legacy by summarizing for you the main findings of his shoe on the side of the road research, which to this day stands as perhaps the most comprehensive project to ever seek to answer this most critical of life's questions. So let us first look at a few of the most popular theories, which remain among the most intuitively persuasive to most people, even if there is no more hard evidence to support them than any other theory. The first is simply that people throw the shoes out of the windows of moving cars. And why do they do this? Well, there are several sub theories regarding that. Kids fighting in the back seat is perhaps the most popular of these. If you think back to your own childhood, you can probably remember how intense some of these backseat fights with your brother or sister could get and the sort of cruelty you could muster in the heat of the conflict. Kids often tend to be fascinated with testing the limits of rules and taboos and throwing things out of the windows of moving cars is one common way that this childish curiosity manifests. Put it all together and throwing a sibling's shoe out of the window to spite them, or even your own shoe out the window just to be naughty, is a pretty believable root cause of the shoe along the side of the road phenomenon. School buses are another popular accused culprit for much of the same reasons. Now, the problem with this theory is that shoes on the side of the road don't seem to be disproportionately kids' shoes or at least not to the degree of being noticeable. Still, it is much harder to imagine adults willingly throwing their shoes out the window, unless of course they are drunk, which is another popular theory. For practical purposes, there is not much difference between what is funny to a gang of kids and what is funny to a gang of drunk party bros. But why only one shoe? Well, aside from the reason that throwing the shoes out the window is just a prank and not an actual valid attempt to get rid of the shoes for their own sake, in David Feldman's third, Pongeable's book, 
when do fish sleep? He quotes a reader who says it is all about logistics. Most people's hands aren't large enough to comfortably grasp a pair of shoes, even if the laces are tied. Therefore, one shoe gets thrown at a time as the vehicle continues to travel. Perhaps one shoe, thrown weakly, lands on the edge of the highway, while the other, thrown with more force, lands off the road to live invisibly among tall grass or bush. In Feldman's sixth book, meanwhile, When Did Wild Poodles Roam the Earth? A reader similarly argued that, at least where he came from, teenagers liked to deliberately whip shoes out the window, not because they were drunk or fighting, but because they had made a game of trying to hit street signs with them. His 12th book, Why Do Pirates Love Parrots? saw a different sort of reader confession, in which a woman claimed that where she comes from, it is not uncommon for the person sitting in the front passenger seat to sometimes stick their right foot out the window during a long car ride as part of a reclining pose that looks something like this, and that it is therefore logical to assume that some shoes would inevitably get lost as a result of this. I would be curious if any of you guys have ever heard of either of these alleged practices, because I certainly have not. But talking of shoes just falling off, a second leading theory of what Feldman calls single shoe syndrome, or SSS, is that the shoes have just fallen off some vehicle that might have been transporting shoes for some reason, with garbage trucks being the most commonly accused. The sanitation department people, however, do not tend to like this theory, as it implies that their trucks are just spewing garbage all over the place. Which, to be fair, we really don't see a lot of other evidence of. I mean, how often do you see an empty empty cereal box on the side of the road, or an old shampoo bottle. But there are other plausible shoe shedders out there. A shoe could fall out of an overcrowded trunk or truck bed of someone going camping, or it could fall out of the backpack of someone who isn't even driving at all, but rather walking on the side of the road. Where I live, you sometimes see homeless people pushing around big shopping carts loaded up with random junk, and it seems plausible that stray shoes could occasionally fall off these. I'm actually quite partial to the wandering hobo theory because it also conveniently explains why you tend to occasionally come across a single raggy shirt lying on the side of the road as well. But such theories of course fail to explain why stray shoes are sometimes even spotted alongside super busy freeways where pedestrians aren't even allowed to walk. Alright, now let us go a little bit further down the SSS iceberg. A uniquely American explanation for all of this is that the stray shoes are refuse from the uniquely American tradition of married couples tying shoes to the back of their cars when they drive away from their wedding. This is unto itself a very bizarre phenomenon, but luckily David Feldman tackles it in his very first book, titled simply Imponderables. Apparently, the shoe has long been a symbol in Western culture of the transfer of property from one person to another. There are references to shoe rituals in the Bible involving property transfers, and these were practiced by Christians for centuries. They usually involve taking off your shoes and symbolically giving them to another person to show that you were abandoning your claim to something. And because weddings, were traditionally understood as the transfer of the property of a woman from one family to another. There were shoe traditions bound up in this as well. By the Victorian age, the British had established a symbolic ritual of playfully throwing shoes at a couple as they left the church to go home, as a sort of good luck to the bride sort of thing. And Americans adopted this tradition as well. But then, as times progressed, this gradually transitioned into just throwing rice and attaching a few symbolic shoes to the back of the car. There are a few problems with this theory as it relates to SSS, however. One, it doesn't explain why it happens in non-American countries. Two, weddings probably aren't happening enough to explain how widespread this phenomenon is. And three, the entire shoe on car tradition has largely fallen out of fashion in recent decades, with tying cans to the back of cars being much trendier now. In fact, when I was making this video, I struggled quite a bit to even find a stock footage picture either a cartoon or a photo 
of a car with shoes tied to it. Cans are just so vastly more common at this point. Another explanation with ties to a completely different cultural mystery is that the stray shoes are shoes that fell from telephone lines. Sometimes, especially in urban areas, you will come across shoes with the laces tied together hanging from power lines. This is unto itself a bizarre and mysterious phenomenon that has been the source of even more idle speculation than SSS, simply because it is so obviously deliberate when SSS has a bit more ambiguity regarding the intentionality. I read a really interesting article about shoe hanging from this Chicago NPR affiliate in which the reporter found evidence to support the popular urban legend that the shoes are used to mark the borders of gang territory or memorialize someone who died. Whether it's gang guys or just homeboys from the hood or the block, as one of his inmate sources said. But he also found evidence that they're just thrown up there for fun as pranks by kids. Now, due to weather and so on, obviously at some point these shoes will come down. And given that power lines tend to run parallel to streets, it seems reasonable to assume that at least some side of the road shoes are just a lingering remnant of this. Though again, we have to ask, why just one? Another interesting and very specific theory, also discussed in When Do Fish Sleep, was that the stray shoes are remnants of emergencies. When administering CPR, paramedics are trained to take off the victim's shoes in order to promote better circulation. Many times in transporting a heart attack victim from a residence, the shoes are taken off hastily and get lost before the patient enters the ambulance. You could imagine this being the case for other types of emergencies as well. Shoes can come off quite easily, and it's not hard to think of a scenario in which someone faints or collapses by the side of the road and one of their shoes come off and the ambulance people rather understandably don't treat finding their stray shoe as a priority, so it gets left behind. But I have to say, the theory that I personally find most persuasive of all is also one that is found in the fish book, and it blames our old friends, the animals. <laughs> Suggests a reader, the shoes were dropped there by animals. Various beasties are attracted by the taste and smell of salt impregnated leather. Since animals have trouble getting more than one shoe in their mouths, they only carry one of the pair away. Where they finally discard it is where you see it, invariably without its mate. I like this explanation because it's so versatile. The stray shoes could be pets carrying shoes out of the houses where they live. They could be wild creatures like coyotes or some foreign equivalent taking shoes out of the trash or from a campsite or some other human encampment and just ditching them in random places when they get bored with them. It would also explain why it is not entirely unusual to come across a single shoe in the woods or in a ravine or places like that. Now the deepest, most bottom of the iceberg theory of SSS is simply that there is no single theory sufficient to explain it. The whole thing is just a complicated nexus of random events that in aggregate appear to reflect a single unified phenomenon, but are really just a million discrete acts that our pattern biased human brains wrongly interpret as component pieces of some larger whole. In other words, all of the above theories could not only be simultaneously true, but could also be supplemented by a vast number of events that are even more narrowly particular, a guy who puts his shoes on the roof of the car while loading it up for a trip and then forgets about them, a betrayed wife discovering the shoe of another woman in her husband's car while driving then throws it out the window in anger, a mentally ill person having some sort of shoe hiding episode, an environmentally indifferent amputee on the way back from the shoe store. Truly, the possibilities are endless. But this in its own way is actually the most disturbing solution to the SSS mystery of all. What if our world is not in fact a a tidy arrangement of simple cause-effect relationships? What if we instead inhabit a fundamentally chaotic world of disorder in which all manifestations of reality are simply artifacts of the endlessly ricocheting billiard balls representing a staggeringly incalculable number of independent exertions of free will, each bearing equal capacity to permanently reshape reality for the rest of us, with any attempt at seeking a logical explanation for the phenomenon that define our fundamentally incoherent existence and all ultimately futile exercise in the vain arrogance of man? So, what do you think is the most plausible explanation of single shoe syndrome? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you next week.